Hi, this is Mike from The Soul's Relic, and it's story time. So I just got done with the whole series of doing the suspension on the ram. It's time for its thrilling conclusion. This one is sitting down at my desk in my office because it's more of a story than actual instruction or me doing anything. I'm going to talk to you about what happened when I brought my ram to the shop to get the vehicle aligned. They gave me this lovely printout. On this printout, there are several values and things like that. And this is the before and this is the after. So if you look at the before, you know, we have some greens. Basically, there's three measurements on here. One is the camber, one is the caster, and the other is the toe. Or the, So that would be your toe in, toe out. So we have the, cam the camber and the toe in, toe out I discussed before. So we have the camber which if you're looking at the wheel straight on like this, it's whether the wheel's like this or like this. Now, the toe is whether the wheel's like this going straight down the road or tilted like this going straight down the road. Obviously, I'm exaggerating. The caster, if the microphone's the back of the vehicle and my hand's the front, is whether how far forward or backward the wheel is. Typically, on a caster on most vehicles, you can't, make adjustments to it there might be some like if you drive a ferrari for instance because you might race with it that you could adjust the caster on it but most vehicles doesn't have an adjustable caster and the values on those are usually pretty big because they're designed for racing if they move as opposed to transport it just has to deal with the wider the wheelbase the better stability you have at higher speeds so anyways getting back to my story I find a shop and I'll actually do an alignment. Call them up, it's like, schedule my appointment. And unfortunately, I didn't ask the right questions. And the funny thing is, is I was a little upset about this. Little is an understatement. I was very upset about this. So I did the camber and the camber wasn't really spot on. I, I, te I went through after doing the toe in toe out and the camber was off, which is not that uncommon. But I said, I wasn't gonna worry about trying to fix that because you know what? I'm gonna take it in. They're gonna go ahead and fix it. I'm, I'm dealing with a shop, right? They know what they're doing. Now I typically, I don't take my vehicles into the shop. And I mean, it's just something I don't do. My truck's been in the shop twice once was for an oil change the other one was well this alignment my envoy was in the shop once and that was for an ac recharge i didn't have the equipment to draw down the ac so it made better sense just to take it to a shop and have somebody professional who has the equipment go ahead and do it but let's get back to the number two time i took my truck to the shop so we have all kinds of different values here if you notice in green it says negative point five percent for the camber now it goes down in red negative 0.5 percent for the camber so first off i know my values of my truck and it's actually negative 0.4 is the maximum so for the camber and so they did not touch the camber on the vehicle they did the toe in toe out but they did not touch the camber on the vehicle now after expressing my how upset I was how very upset I was all about them not do, t doing the camber and they need to adjust the camber and then go do the toe in toe out again because they got to do that before they do the toe in toe out and like well we don't adjust the camber here because you need special tools and I go no you don't you need a wrench and it would be very helpful to have like a rubber hammer or a dead blow hammer I'm sure your mechanics have those and you know it's just a little bubble level Seriously, it's, it's nothing extraordinary. You can tell me you don't have the tools to do a proper alignment. Uh, I, I was I brought it here to get a proper alignment done, not just a toe in, toe out. Well, after going back and forth, and I, I didn't blow up at the guy. I never asked for anything. But when I went to go pay, I, he's like, it's on us. Don't worry about it. They did the toe in, toe out, and they didn't charge me for it. That's one of the reasons why I, I don't want to blast this company, because they did make it right. And I also don't want to blast this company out there because they did make it right. Because I don't want other people getting the name of the company and then thinking, oh, I could just give a fuss and they'll give me free work. I don't want that to happen to them either. They, they were very nice about everything. It's just 
they didn't meet my expectations and um yeah that was with the just of it it was a lot of it was my fault too because i didn't go specifically into what kind of alignments are you going to do are you just going to do a toe alignment are you going to do a camber are you going to do the caster what are you going to do my my fault and i was talking to a friend of mine who used to own a body shop and he goes yeah there's a lot of guys that just do toe in toe out they won't touch anything else and that's what you found and so you want to before you when you book that appointment you want to ask if they're if you want the camber done you got to ask that they do the camber otherwise and they may say no we don't do that but yeah that was what he said but one of the big things that came up on this is that if you look at the rear wheels now the rear wheel values are set if they're not set so in other words if those values are off there's probably a problem in the rear end something's bent something's loose something's broken it needs to be fixed and that's how you fix that alignment if you go through here the camber on the rear wheels are supposed to be 0.0, .0 like they are here on the right side which is the passenger side the driver's side however says zero point or negative 0 0.4 again it's within it's within its ability to you know look it over i guess you can say but there's definitely a problem there because it's not on a, on a straight zero so after going through all of that and if you looked on the video i said this assumes that my rear wheels are aligned and then i put in there i assumed wrong in a caption that's how i know i assumed wrong was from this information here so what what is the big problem in the rear well after a lot a lot of time guess what i did some research and figured it out i needed a new one of these things do you have any idea what this is this is the rear a rear axle shaft so I have a bent rear axle shaft. You really don't notice it driving it. Um, this one didn't come with new studs. I probably should buy order some of those. I got a lot of parts before I put this in that I got to order. I'm gonna do wheel bearings while I have this out as well um, because it's just it's a pain. You might as well. It's one of those things you might as well do while you you're doing the rest of it. Apparently I need some new studs for it too. You can see I got it from Amazon. But yeah, I got to go put that in now. And there's going to be a video, I'm sure, on that. Um, I'll bring you along for the ride. I, I was hoping to do you joints. We'll see how, how much of this list I actually do, how much of it I actually put off. The the one axle, uh, I, it's best to do wheel bearings when I do that. So I might as well go ahead and do the wheel bearings. When I got that pinion out, it's pretty easy to pull the axle out. So I can pull it out of the other side, do the wheel bearings on that side too. I got to get hub oil. Uh, there's just a huge list of parts i gotta get i gotta get new studs for that i probably should just go ahead and get new studs but interesting enough thing is i'm still trying to deduct when did this axle bend i might have been i bought the truck with it bent my dad hit a curb or something and it bent the axle i do remember though the driver's side rear what rear tire i could never get it off and i eventually had to get it off in a parking lot because i had a flat tire I figured out how to get it off with a sledgehammer and pounding on the tire eventually came off but i had all kinds of things with ratchet straps to posts trying to you know ratchet strap it off and it, that thing was just solidly rusted on there and i'm wondering if those two might be coordinated it's possible and it's possible they're just two completely different things it's possible i could have bent the axle by putting four yards of mulch on a pallet in the back of my half ton pickup and if you don't know understand it's about a ton worth of mulch two yards of dirt of topsoil in the bed um for those of you who don't know that's about a ton of topsoil in my half ton pickup so that might have been the cause of the bend of the axle it does have the air assist so it keeps things nicely propped up but seriously those things really don't add rigidity to the your your axles or your suspension parts or anything like that as far as putting that much weight in your half ton pickup i don't recommend it even if you have enhancements like i have to do that and there's a good reason why the half ton truck it still has half ton brakes so with the half ton brakes in the truck it makes it really long to stop they get really hot yeah i don't recommend it uh, when i did the topsoil it's more than likely the time that it would have happened because those air assists actually well they didn't go out the cor there was corrosion on the ground and I, that had to get cleaned up but they wouldn't work and it, like pumped up just a little bit and then i went to go hit the button again to pump it up some more and it wouldn't pump up some more and apparently it was just corrosion on 
the ground so i cleaned everything up put a new bolt in there and it runs great again that's my little story i don't know how exactly that axle got bent but plenty of capabilities and possibilities for that by the way while i'm here i might as well wish you a merry christmas you know i got my christmas sweatshirt on this is real christmas not like ugly sweater christmas but yeah, so, I mean, ultimately, I didn't pay for this alignment. I wasn't happy with this alignment. I'm going to be going someplace else to get an alignment. But first, I want to replace that back axle, get everything trued up. I might mess with all of these values myself again. Once that happens, I need to get the vehicle aligned. Then we're going to get some new tires put on the front because by that time, they're getting pretty worn right now. By the time all of that happens, I'll probably need new front tires anyways at $250 pop. So working on getting that third gen Ram back in order and that's just my little story and i'm hoping that you at least at least if you learned anything from this learn that when you call up a shop for an alignment make sure to ask what types of alignment that they're going to you might even want to ask particularly are you going to do are you going to align the camber they should know what that is if they don't know what that is find another shop but are you going to align the camber if they say yeah yeah expect your camber lit you know aligned and you know ask them if they, they'll give you a nice printout of the before and after of the alignment values this is important because then you can see if they've done it or not now a lot of these things with my the friend of mine was telling me is they may not even have to align it all together they could just kind of adjust the cages and make these things work too but you hope that they would at least be honest enough to do the work that's just my little story today i hope you enjoyed it and if you haven't yet, uh, subscribe to the channel. If you have, great. Make sure you have all the notifications going on. And uh, like this video. Everybody needs to like this video. Click that thumbs up. Like the video. It helps other people hear my wonderful storytelling. So that being said, I will see you next time.